the first sale, which that was about a thousand pounds, that was about three hundred pounds profit, and then the second sale I made on just over two thousand pound order, and obviously my excitement, we're coming up to two hundred and fifty thousand pounds in revenue because I started the course last year, three or four months ago, I was able to leave my nine to five job. Hi everybody, it's Lewis Smith here and I'm delighted to be joined today by James Erdley for another amazing member interview. So James joined us last year and uh, is here today to share his story. So James, welcome. It's great to have you here. Perfect. Yes, thank you for the introduction, Lewis. Yeah, looking forward to our, our chat today and uh, yeah, delving into my story and, and how you've helped me to, to get where I am today. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, before we do dive into how you got to where you are today and, and share everybody, you know, the results that you've got just so we can understand how much your life has changed in the last few months maybe you could share with us what you were doing before you joined us at dropship unlocked and what life looked like for you then yeah absolutely so yes yeah, so i joined in march of last year um and in march last year i was in my nine to five job um as a lot of people do that that um start the course and they stay in their nine to five job to start with um and a typical day for me in la last march was uh, sort of wake up eight o'clock into the office at nine, through the day till five, go home and, and just repeat that over and over again. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I knew that there was something more that I wanted to do. Um, and uh, it, I knew, I looked around at the people around me that were 20 years on in my career path. Um, and it wasn't something that I was aspiring to be uh, to be at in, in the next 20 years. So yeah, that was my sort of day to day, nine to five, very, very classic sort of corporate role. Um, but I knew it, it wasn't it wasn't going to be enough for me at that at that point. Why was it not enough for you? Like, wh when did you reach the point? Because usually there's a tipping point where somebody realizes, you know, a specific moment. I know I certainly remember the moment for me when I realized that this wasn't the path I wanted to go down. But can you talk us through like when it got to that point where you thought there must be more to life than this? Yeah, definitely. So uh, obviously, a lot of people can can carry on with the nine to five, and and there's nothing wrong with that. But there was just something in me that. I wanted to feel like I was pushing myself all the time. Um, and after your, your initial learning curve of going into a nine to five job sort of tails off, you definitely seem to go through the motions every day. Uh, and I was conscious that if I carry on like this for, for years, I'll, I'll never really push myself, never fulfill what I feel like my, my potential can be um, in my career. So I, I that was really it. And, and it was just the monotony and, and, and the repetitiveness and realizing that there was never going to be this breakthrough moment in the in that career where I had the freedom that I was I'm after so um yeah that was it it was realizing that there was nothing to aim for that I really was uh, sort of passionate about at that point so if you had continued down that path and maybe avoided your entrepreneurial urge and just ignored it and, and carried through a big thing that people often don't consider is the opportunity cost, what would have been lost by not pursuing a different route. So what do you think you'd have missed out on over the coming years and, and throughout the rest of your life had you just stuck to that path that you were on previously? Yeah, so for me, I, I'd say that success that I would have been missing out on is, is freedom. And that's the main thing that I, I really go for with, with this business. Um, it's the time freedom and the location freedom of working from wherever and whenever you want to, to work. Uh, obviously, with the career, the nine to five, you're you're given the set hours each day. You're given the set location to work from, um, and and that was it. The, the opportunity cost then was always knowing where I was going to be working from, always knowing when I was going to be working, what I was going to be doing, um, and that's it. The opportunities that are out there with different business models like this, I would have I'd have missed out on if I'd have carried on down that same route. So James, if you put yourself back into the frame of mind that you were in when you had the nine to five job and you were staring out the window and thinking, I wish I could, like you said, have that level of freedom, whether it be financial freedom, whether it be freedom to spend time with loved ones, family, whether it be uh, location freedom, like you said, to run your business from anywhere. Can you describe to us what the dream was for you specifically? Like what did you envisage? How did you envisage life in a perfect scenario? Definitely. Yeah. So for me, as you say, looking out the window and, and wanting more, uh, more for me was was freedom of location uh, and time and, and being able to do what I want and with who I want uh, whenever I want. So that, you know, in, you know, if I was to visualize that would look like me being able to travel to a country for 
a weekend, two weeks uh, away, and the business then still is profitable without me, um, and I can still make make profit while doing whatever I want around the world. Um, and that that really is a goal for me still. Uh, and it was definitely back then really what I needed to to push me out of my comfort zone and and really really go for it. Love it. What would you say then was stopping you from being able to do that at the time? What were the biggest barriers for you? So confidence in myself, um, really to go out there and do this something, sort of thing on my own uh, without any knowledge or prior experience of e-commerce or marketing, uh, without any, any real skills that I knew was going to be transferable to this business model. Um, so that was it mainly, self-confidence and knowing that I could go out and achieve these sort of things. Um, and also structure was, was a big one for me. I had all this energy to go out and, and create something and leave my job um, and, and run my own business, but nowhere to put that energy. Um, so I needed like a structure where I could know what my day was going to look like to go from zero to, to where I am now and where I want to go to. I needed a structure to follow. So I had somewhere I can place all my energy into every morning uh, and really get to where I want to be. Nice. And when did you first hear about drop shipping then on the journey? Yeah, so I, I made it. I'll go back in time a little bit as well. Between, I, I was working my job and I and I took a little bit of time off my job to go traveling. Um, so traveling and that was in 2020 and it was cut short by the coronavirus pandemic. Um, but it really taught me a lot in that little amount of time that I spent uh, abroad. Was that it wasn't sustainable the way I was traveling in 2020 because I was taking a break from my work and obviously earning no income while I was out there. Um, so it was all expenditure, no income, and it wasn't going to be a sustainable way to travel. And from that, I learned that basically if I was going to keep being able to travel, I need to be able to earn money while I'm out there. Um, and then obviously then that brings you on to online business. So I knew that it was going to be somewhere online that uh, that I needed to, to, to get some income from was, was an online source. Um, and then you go through all the usual routes. You look down, where can I make money online? Uh, FBA, Amazon selling is quite a big one. Uh, and then drop shipping uh, comes up. And um, obviously, it's got a bit of a bad reputation. So I wanted to work out what sort of business model is going to work and be a genuine business. Um, yeah, and that's how I really stumbled on drop shipping being my main focus. Uh, and then from there, it sort of led on to um, drop ship unlocked. And why did you rule out Amazon FBA as an option? And why did you opt to go for drop shipping out of interest? Yeah, so it was purely down to the upfront costs to start the business. Um, so obviously with, with Amazon FBA, what I was certain what I was looking into was an initial upfront um, cost to, to buy in stock. Uh, uh, and then that brings with it the risk that you might have a, a warehouse full of stock that doesn't sell. Um, so with the drop shipping model, it was all about as little upfront costs as I could possibly put in to get the business going and start making sales. Um, with, yeah, like I say, and uh, it was as little upfront cost as possible was was my aim. Yeah. Okay. So you decided that dropshipping was the model you wanted to go with. And we'll go into a little bit around how the model we uh, use is not the model that people associate with the bad reputation, like you say, the products from China, the low quality items, those, those kind of things. We work with UK suppliers offering usually next day delivery. Um, but what was it at the time then when you first heard about dropshipping? What was it that was stopping you from just starting a dropshipping business on your own, like just piecing together some free information off of YouTube and saying, okay, I have a business? Yeah, well, 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 I actually I did start out on my own, um, and I did did do the the um, sort of selling from China from AliExpress, um, and, and I really gave it a go and, and worked out Facebook ads as much as I could on my own, um, and basically I, I I spent money on Facebook ads and, and never made the profit back that that justified the ad spend, so I went out tried it on my own and obviously made a lot of mistakes, um, had the the stress and lost the money as well that I'd invested to try and get this off the off the ground running on my own. Uh, so I knew if I was going to really take it seriously and, and get it right and learn from my mistakes and learn from others' mistakes, um, I was looking for a bit more structure, a bit more guidance into really how to create a business and and really make it work. So it sounds like you were struggling with the, the actual concept of the business model um, overall, right? So maybe selling products from China with those long delivery times was the problem that you were struggling with. And it wasn't so much necessarily running the ads, but actually how do you find those UK suppliers? How do you choose a niche in the UK market that you can earn 
100, 200 pounds in profit per sale on. Um, and actually, like you said, have that blueprint, that guidance, that strategy to get the business up and running. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. It, it, it was really taking it from the model that I was running at the time, um, which was low quality products and low ticket items, but moving it on to a real UK business um, with UK suppliers, reputable suppliers and high ticket items that sell their high quality and customers are very happy with. And also the profit then uh, speaks for itself. So you got profits of £300 upwards from every sale and a real reputable um, UK company that I could create and customers could trust me. Um, and I could then uh, send out products that customers were going to be happy with and I wasn't going to have to deal with returns or unhappy customers. Uh, and that's what um, yeah, UK dropshipping uh, through Lewis Smith really has provided um, and and made me able to do. Yeah, I think it's the sustainability of the the brand, isn't it? That if you want um, a reputable, long term, sustainable brand, like you said, if you want customers to be satisfied and have a high level of pride in your brand, the model from China is. I mean, you might make a few pounds, you know, and and some like kind of flash in the pan cash with it but it's very quickly going to come unstuck you're going to have problems refunds chargebacks all kinds of issues with payment processes withholding fund payouts and the whole model eventually crumbles whereas i think the model we use is used by national retailers in the uk and has been being used for many many years you know even prior to the internet being in existence so it's uh it, it, i guess it's just knowing that the model you build your business on is something especially if you're going to leave your job for it, that will still be around in five, 10 years time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I was only interested in in growing a real long-term business um, that could sustain me for years. And as you say, I, I saw the the short-term um, products from, from China, from AliExpress. I saw that really as a short-term win and you might make some money quickly, um, but I was interested in a real long-term business. Um, and yeah, as you say, Lewis, um, what you put together really, really enables people to to make a long-term business over years. And then how did you hear about the Dropship Unlocked mentorship program? What was your first introduction to us? So as I was I was doing the um, sort of looking into dropshipping in the UK, um, obviously Google and YouTube, as we know, it knows that I'm in the market uh, for, for a dropshipping course. Uh, and it was a YouTube ad uh, that you put together that, that was the first time I was really aware of, of Dropship Unlocked um, and that you sort of popped up before a video I was watching on, on YouTube. Um, and then, yeah, I took note and realized that uh, obviously there were people in the UK creating a, a profitable long term business. So I thought it maybe it was sort of dominated by American uh, American market. But um, yeah, and that's where I first came across you and, and started to really look into Dropship Unlocked as, a, as, an, as an option. OK. And what would you say piqued your interest? Because there's a lot of bad information out there on dropshipping there's people talking about selling cheap products from china or you know listing them on facebook marketplace or using oberlo and aliexpress like a lot of these kind of piece it together and you can make money doing it but not if you're going to build a long-term sustainable brand that one day you might exit from and actually sell an asset that someone would want to buy so what did you feel was different about this model that stood out to you so working with high quality uk suppliers um and having the course that sort of showed you how to find these UK suppliers, how to speak to them when you're on the phone with them, um, and then working with them for, for a long term and putting together real long term partnerships with with real UK businesses um, that are running uh, in this country. And they also are running for the benefit of their customers. Um, and that really stood out. And also the, the fact that because they're UK suppliers, we can achieve next day delivery as fast as next day. Um, and knowing that we're really going to be able to produce a high quality product for customers and also uh, back it up with with good delivery times and good service after the sale as well. And did you know which products you were going to sell before you joined us? Or did you have suppliers already lined up that you thought, these are the people I'm going to work with, these are the products I'm going to sell? Or did you learn all of that using the steps within week two of our program? So purely learned it all through the steps, yeah, through the step-by-step -step guide put together by yourself. Um, I had no prior experience, as I say, of, of marketing, of, of e-commerce um, and no real idea before I started of where it was going to take me, what products I was going to go into. I had no affinity anywhere. Um, so and I, and I definitely had, didn't have any head starts with knowing about marketing or, or e-commerce. So, yeah, I definitely put it down to what I learned through the course. And it shows you which products 
are more likely to be successful and then you can make your decisions based on the on the data that's provided um that, that you go out and find uh, with help from the course yeah i think that's probably really played to your advantage in that you came in as a blank canvas and said i have no biases no preconceptions i'm coming in and like you said using the data to maximize your chance of success that's everything we do that that's the biggest mm -hmm. factor that we base our decision making on data at dropship unlocked so um could you talk us through the moment then that you'd you'd seen my ad on youtube you'd um, heard a bit about dropship unlocked and dropshipping in the uk but could you talk about the specific moment that you decided i'm in I'm doing this. I'm starting this business. And when you actually booked your enrollment call and joined us at Dropship Unlocked. Yeah. So it was really after I had seen the ad um, and I really put together um, what the benefits were and how it was going to help me to achieve my goals of earning money online. Um, so then I, I got in touch. I watched the free training, um, got in touch with uh, and then booked in my call um, to really go through it in detail um, with somebody about how the course was going to benefit me. Um, yeah, and, and, and on the call, I, I worked out that um, I was really committed. I was going to be able to bring a lot to the course as well um, in terms of helping everyone else and being on the journey with everyone. Um, and the course really ticked the boxes in terms of being able to give me that structure that I needed to put my energy into. Um, and then, yeah, it was on that call and I thought this is this is going to be going to be it. And I, I stayed true to that commitment that I had made to myself that I was going to really go for it get out my comfort zone and, and start this business um yeah still alongside my my nine to five job um but uh i was i sort of jumped in and, and thought yeah this is going to be going to be for me i went for it fantastic i love that you came in with the mindset of contribution as well and, and thought i could add a lot to this community because that will be one of the reasons why we decided that you were a good fit to work with us and that we were a good fit for you because it doesn't happen every time someone turns up with a level of expectation and kind of a level of cynicism and skepticism and say well you know deliver me the information spoon feed it to me but you turned up with a view of i know that this process works i know there'll be problems along the way like there are with starting any business but i'm in a community now who not only can i use information from but i can also contribute to that pool of information help others out knowing that they'll want to reciprocate as well down the line absolutely yeah definitely and that that was made clear and i knew that i could bring in value of my own and, and that i was going to join the journey and i didn't come in with with the preconception that it was going to be easy and and done for you by lewis and his team and um, it was very much going to be created by my own hard work but the structure and the help and the guidance along the way is really what what helped me to, to to stay with it and stay consistent and and get to yeah get to success nice so you said that some of the biggest problems you were having previously were the model the low quality products from china the long delivery times the um the facebook ads that you mentioned you spent a lot of money on and it wasn't profitable how did dropship unlocked solve those problems for you so the first thing that I, I really needed and, and got a lot of guidance from with Lewis's course is finding the right products to sell. Um, otherwise, you're just essentially guessing uh, beforehand and you're not making your decisions based on data. Um, and Lewis really shows you the way to uh, focus on the data and only really make your decision when you're happy and you've got the best chance of success. And that's really helpful. So you're not just taking a bit of a stab in the dark with a product just because it looks cool or you think it's going to work. It's based on what the market is telling you. Um, and that was the main thing. And then once I had the products, then it all leads on and it all builds momentum um, through the course until you're yeah, up and running ads and you help through the ads as well. And then you're help with running the business day to day uh, after that. So, um, yeah, it just gave me everything from from start to to uh, not finish because it's always ongoing with with the business but it gave me a start up to the point where i could go out and and was was uh, already making profit um sort of very early on yeah absolutely it's interesting that you said previously that you drew up a list of the benefits and you made that decision you'd already decided that you wanted to make your living online because of the fact that travel was important to you location freedom but i think a lot of people have that belief and that that desire maybe not belief but desire but they never find themselves being able to make the step and pull the trigger on that. They're hesitant to invest in themselves, whether maybe they don't believe in themselves or they think that for some reason they can't do it. You know, other people can, but they can't. What was it that made you believe that you could do this? And so much to the point where you took action and, and get, got started. Yeah, so I, I really wanted to stay true to the, the commitment that I'd, I'd made 
um, to myself that I really wanted to change the lifestyle. Um, and going back to the start of the conversation when we're talking about where you want to be in five to ten years, I knew that that wasn't gonna gonna come from staying still and staying in my my job where I was at, at that time. So yeah, I knew that I was that was where I was heading to, and that's where I wanted to be. So and then when I found somewhere that I felt like could facilitate that, um, I really stayed true with that commitment that I had made and and really wanted to to go for something and give it my all so I could get to a place where uh, I, I was aiming for when I was looking out the window back in, in the office. And then when you did finally decide to make the leap and join us, what was your approach to the program? Did you just jump straight in at the end and start learning how to run ads and say, I, you know, I have my products already. I just want the templates, the scripts that we provide you. Or did you go through from the beginning and incrementally build upon the action that you were taking on every single module along the way? What was your approach? Yeah, my approach was to was to take it, you know, one step at a time. And after each module and each video that you watch and and you go through the cheat sheets, stop and take action um, at each point. And then what that does is that builds up the momentum that you can see what you're clearly what you're doing at each step. Um, and it, each step leads on to the next and the next. Um, and then you just yeah, that's it. I knew that I was going to take action on every step along the way. Um, and then once you've taken the first step, it's it's easy then to take the next and the next, and they all lead on to the next until before you know it, you've got a um, professional website, you've got a professional business, you've got UK suppliers, and then as you go along, you've got the ad uh, the ad set up as well. So very much getting stuck in. Um, it's a six week course. Um, I, I think I it took me about seven or eight weeks to go through the whole course from start to finish. Um, so. I, I wanted to rush through it as, as quickly as I could, but at the same time, I wanted to make sure I did everything correctly and di didn't miss out any steps. Um, so it took me about seven or eight weeks uh, to, to go through. And I took a week off work um, to make sure that I could just focus on calling suppliers for a, a full week and make that my focus uh, as the course sort of shows you how to do. Um, yeah, and, and given every step as, as much as I could possibly give with the guidance, definitely, definitely helped me to get there and get to through the course. Brilliant. Now, I'm sure, as you know, and, and many of our Dropship Unlocked members watching this will also know, we host two weekly live question and answer coaching calls where it's live support. You can jump on, ask any questions you have along the process, and one on one will be able to help you with that throughout the group coaching calls. And um, that's designed to help you overcome hurdles and challenges that you'll face along growing one of these businesses which inevitably all of us will but what value did you get from the ongoing live mentorship calls specifically for me it was it was as soon as you hit an obstacle you know that there's a call in the next few days always there's not there's not gonna have to wait too long before you can get firsthand uh, speaking with yourself there's also the facebook group which you can rely on answers that day often um, but also having the access to yourself um, and people that have really created the business um, already within a few days was huge. Um, and always jumping on the call with yourself, Lewis, and you always care for everyone's answers. Um, and when people are hitting inevitable obstacles, um, there's genuine you know, help and, and you really want to make sure that everyone succeeds. And those coaching calls really, really get you through any obstacles that you might face and, and on to the next step. Yeah, from my side, uh, it's funny, I noticed that actually a lot of the time, what they're quite good at is just being a sounding board for people who are building a business, but feel like they're out on their own doing it on a desert island. But actually, it's just letting them know that yes, what you're doing is right, you're following the process, you're on the right track. It's that level of kind of encouragement, and I guess accountability that people often need, rather than the specific tactics obviously we do cover tactics and we get into the weeds with ads and optimizing conversion rates on sites and things like that but yeah oftentimes that stuff is already covered in the program so it's really just about making sure that that person is able to follow that and um, get their business to where they want it to be definitely yeah agree with that a lot of the time you're you're there creating the business on your own um, and you don't know whether you're you know doing everything correctly and, and and sometimes you just want somebody there just to yeah like you say as a sounding board just to bounce off and make sure that you're on the right path and you know somebody's there in your corner to, to help you succeed yeah absolutely so for you then what was some of the biggest eye-openers about the specific home turf advantage model that we teach at dropship unlocked like what would you say were some of the biggest learnings that you took from the program yeah so the the data first the data driven approach was the first thing to really catch my eye um, and making sure that 
from the very start, um, Lewis always teaches that uh, the data is going to tell you where that your best chance of success is um, and minimising your risk as much as possible before you set up. Uh, that way, once you've got your business established, you've already done a lot of the, the research and you, you can be confident that um, what you're going to set up is, is going to work. Um, as long as you carry on uh, and, and work hard and follow the, the process, um, you can then be confident. And that, yeah, it was that data driven approach that really was um, a big learning and I really took away from the, the course. Yeah. Absolutely. So if we talk timelines then since when you joined, um, because that's what everybody always asks, like how long after you started running ads for your store, did you make your first sale? How much was it for? What was the profit? So could you talk us through the moment you made that first sale, where you were, how it felt and what it was for? Yeah, absolutely. So you, you definitely always remember your, your first sale. And um, it was I, was, I was at work um, in my old job and uh, I was out and about and I left my my personal phone in my car um, and it was when I went back to the car and, and checked my phone obviously you're always checking just in case um, and uh, yeah the Shopify I missed the the Shopify no- notification but I could see that it had come through while I, while I was out um, and then it's the excitement that and the proof of concept that this is going to work um, and that was about a week after I'd started placing ads um, that that came through and uh, I, I just couldn't wait to um, as soon as I could and got away from from work and and everything get back and fulfill that order and uh yeah thank the customer and 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 make sure they have a have a great experience with us straight away fantastic so you didn't you missed the notification ka sound but you managed to get the the dopamine hit that the notification on your screen gives you yeah it was a dopamine hit yeah not as not as good as the the cha-ching but um that came a bit later on actually the second sale i made was i was on a live q a call with, with you lewis and um, the, the first sale, which I've just mentioned, that, that was about a £1,000. Um, that was about £300 profit. And then the second sale I made on, on the call with you was it was a 2000 just over £2,000 order. Um, and obviously my excitement was I was muted at the time, but I, I, I came off unmute and, and shared it with all the group and, and the support was, was there from everyone. Um, and that was about a five or £600 profit. Um, yeah, but before I was VAT registered and and that the, the size of that profit was amazing. It really just that proof of concept and, and that gives you the momentum to to keep pushing and, and really optimize and carry on. I love it. I remember that Q&A call. Cool. I remember you saying, I think I've just made my second sale and us all celebrating on the call with you. That's a, that's a great moment. Um, so one sale for £300 profit, another sale for £600 profit. That's £900 in profit. I imagine probably more than you were would have earned in salary from that day job that you were at at the time, right? How did it feel to have just made nine hundred pounds in profit, essentially whilst doing nothing, whilst your phone was in your car? Yeah, that was a breakthrough moment, really realizing that while I was at work, these ads and the website was was working without me and without needing to swap my time for money. Uh, and it was yeah, it was an eye opener that I could be going about whatever I was doing at the time. And yeah, it, the, the the business, the ads, the website were, were working without needing my um, attention all the time. And yeah, definitely a, a dopamine hit with, with those first few sales. Amazing. So that was the first couple of sales. Now talk to us about where we are now. So you joined us last year. What are your total sales to date since you joined the program? Yeah, so since starting now, we're, we're, we're coming up to uh, £250,000 in, in revenue since I started the course last year. Uh, which has been brilliant and, and the growth really has, has taken off um, recently and it's looking to expand and that's it and yeah like I say it's all been possible from the learnings that I've made uh, through your your course and uh, it's it's so exciting to watch the numbers go up and and yeah you know realize that you've really created a, a profitable UK business. That's incredible I mean I, I get to hear this firsthand in our conversations in the week because I know you're in our invitation to scale mastermind where we have the the small group meetings in person but around you in your day-to-day life since you've reached that point of saying I have a business now that's turned over a quarter of a million pounds in its first year with no prior e-commerce experience and having only just learned about this model that it even existed what do people around you think how do they react to it friends family when you tell them that you've made 250,000 pounds in sales since starting this business a couple of or a year ago what do people say and are there people who doubted you at the time who are now surprised by that 
Yeah, so it, it, yeah, initially that there was doubt when I first told people about joining uh, joining the course and starting the business, um, but obviously it's changed now. And, and the real moment uh, that was a big one was about uh, three or four months ago. Uh, I was able to leave my nine to five job um, and and go full time with the business. And it was at that moment that I think friends and family around me could see that and the penny dropped that it was a real sustainable business that I could have the confidence now with the money it was earning to leave my job and and go and take it on full time uh, and definitely yeah I, I know that um family and friends have been really supportive and i think if they knew the work that's gone in and 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 the hard work and everything they'd be you know, really proud of of um how far i've come in in a short space of time yeah in their eyes you're probably an overnight success but what people don't see behind the scenes is that most overnight successes are preceded by a year's worth of hard work yeah with you know without much to show for it <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So um, it was hard work, but anything that you that you really want to achieve is always going to come with with obstacles along the way. Um, and overall, it absolutely been the most enjoyable experience and pushing myself has been brilliant. Um, and the, the you know, all the good times outweigh the obstacles that you come across. And, and then you've always got the tools in your arsenal to, to come over them and um, yeah, really keep pushing on. Yeah, absolutely. So jumping forward then to today, where you're at now, the success that you've had with the business i know we talked at the beginning of our conversation about what your dreams and aspirations were when you were working the nine to five job and you felt like you couldn't escape it what has the business that you have now enabled you to be able to do day to day whether that's spending more time with friends family loved ones what kind of impact has it had on your day-to-day life would you say so day to day, I'm able to start and finish work when I choose. Um, obviously, I've got a, a VA in place now, um, which is taught through the course as well, how best to to choose a VA, so virtual assistant that's going to do the day to day tasks and, and handle the customer service and the order fulfillment between nine and five and make sure customers are always really well looked after and, and catered to, which means that I'm able to choose how I spend my days from nine to five. Um, and recently I've been able to go abroad and go on holiday uh, with my girlfriend and I know that the business isn't just going to be left without anyone working on it it can still run without me and still make profit while I'm away and and on holiday uh, which is yeah it's definitely something that I was just dreaming of um, last year and now it's starting to really become a reality that's amazing and yeah I remember you've been joining some of our invitation to scale mastermind calls uh, in the weeks recently from some great locations and it's good to see you being able to run the business fully remotely now and, and having outsourced the day-to-day operations to a virtual assistant you freed up your time again to be able to focus on working on the business as a business owner and not getting stuck working in the business so what I would ask is what strategies have you used to grow your business to the level that you're at like because these businesses are constantly evolving you're not you don't just build it and then it's say okay it's done yeah publish live they're they're always growing evolving so what are some of the things that you've done perhaps some unique things that you've done that have got you to where you're at yeah for me it's all about uh consistently setting new goals to keep pushing towards uh so every week i've got a clear goal of what i want to achieve that week um, that I can aim for Monday through Friday and then eat, breaking that down as well to every day knowing exactly what I know that I can work on to really keep moving the business forward um, so never letting it really sit still and always having something to aim for I'd say is a strategy that I use to keep growing the business um, yeah and, and keep feeling like uh, I'm enjoying it every week and, and clearly got goals to strive for all, all the time. Yeah that sounds like a, a great strategy to always be planning for the future if we were to look back then to where you were versus where you are now, if you could go back in time and go back to the former James and maybe sitting in your nine to five job at the moment and give yourself one piece of advice before you joined our program and took that leap, maybe you're just sitting on the fence, not sure whether to commit to something like this, not sure whether you could do it or if you should even invest in your own mentorship. What advice would you give to your former self in that frame of mind? So my advice would be to to go for it um, and really just go for it and not look back and, and commit fully. Um, I'd say the two options that I would be breaking down would be either to go for it and invest in a course and and get a structured guide to help you get to where you want to be or take the other road, which is try and learn these things for yourself 
um, make the inevitable mistakes and failures along the way with the additional stress. Um, so it, for me, it, came, it I would give myself that advice. Which way do you want to go? Um, and which way do you want to have the proven method um, and enjoy it along the way or the method on your own with no experience, trying your best, stress, failures, mistakes? I can only imagine because I had I did, did do that initially. Um, and it would have just continued if I'd carried on down that road. That's a really good point. The level of time, money, stress that it's probably saved you. How much time, money and stress do you think it has saved you having a fast track to build this business rather than having to try to figure this all out from yourself, piece together ebooks and blog posts and YouTube videos? How much time, money and stress would you say it's saved you having a process laid out for you step by step? difficult to put a figure on how much it saves but it's just knowing um, that if you're doing Facebook ads or Google ads wrong the numbers add up very quickly of how much you could be losing um, if you're not doing it in the way that you've been taught and if you're trying to work these things out for yourself so I can only imagine but I think it would be in, in the hundreds in, in the thousands definitely um, if I was to just try these things on my own and, and learn from my own mistakes instead of having other people's mistakes to, to learn from um, as well. And I guess the risk would be that you'd probably still be in your nine to five job right now, funding those mistakes, trying to figure it out for yourself, but without that time freedom and location freedom that you now have as well, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's it. And, and, and the stress that that brings and the doubt because you're not following a proven path, it would be difficult to carry on not not knowing and not feeling like you're following a path that is going to take you to the, the success that you want to get to. So now that you've built this business and you've got it to the point where it's sustainable, it's stable, you are able to rely on it financially, you've left your job, you're able to work from wherever you want in the world, whenever you want, because you have your virtual assistant now. What are your plans for the future, James? What are you looking to do from here? So continue to grow and scale the business um, continues to be my uh, my focus now. The beauty of the business model that we've created it, it is so scalable. Um, and we found markets from the start that are large enough to sustain real large businesses. Um, so there's definitely plenty of, of, of room for growth. Um, so taking it to where I've got to now has been brilliant with the course. Um, I've also now joined Lewis's um, invitation to scale Mastermind. Calls once a week has really taken me to the next level. And then it will be you know getting on, onwards of a million per year in revenue to carry on uh, and keep growing. And, and as well as this, um, really excitingly, I, I want to really be able to help out other people in, in our community, in the Dropship Unlock community. And, and as well as growing and scaling my business, I want to be able to help out others that are on the same journey and are in my position, which is only two steps back uh, from when they're in, you know, people that are in a full time role and looking to create an online business. So I'm really keen now to help out others to, uh, to, to gain success through the Dropship Unlock program and, and helping out wherever I can. Amazing. Well, we, we're delighted to to have you in our community and, and being able to help out others. Um, and we're also focused on getting you to that one, two million per year mark. I mean, that's the next level and that's where things really start to become exciting. So I'm excited to be able to help you on that next step of your journey. Um, so before we close, James, was there anything else that you wanted to say that perhaps we haven't covered in today's chat? Yeah, just, just to close really, um, just to say thank you to yourself, Lewis. Um, really for putting together the course and all the support and guidance along the way. Um, definitely taught me everything I know now um, and given me that structure and the guidance to now go on and, and create a profitable business. So really, yeah, just to finish off by saying thank you very much for all, all your help and really caring about everyone's success in the community has been has been huge. So yeah, just finish by saying thank you, really. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. And I I mean, you are the exact kind of person that we look to bring more of into our community. You came in with the right attitude. You're positive. You've got a sense of contribution. You're always looking to help and add value. And you are why our community works so well. So appreciate everything you do for us as well, James. And um, yeah, it's been great to chat with you today and to hear your story. So thanks for joining us. Perfect. Thank you very much, Lewis. Really enjoyed it. Cheers.